It's like, well, you could try to do it and show people that they're wrong. No, I can't do it. I feel sorry for me. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> you look it up, uh, like, uh, I mean, you really analyze it, and they use the patriarchy as an excuse and to grant them license to do the things that they actually want to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, um, sociopath. I'm looking up sociopath. Um, okay, anti socio. Okay, um, I'm looking at this and. Because that movie, oh, that movie, uh, it's called uh, Confessions of a Sociopathic Social Climber that I was watching, you know? I finished yeah. watching it, um, and it's actually made for the Oxygen TV network. It's a made-for-TV uh, movie. And I noticed, you know, they have all these cut scenes, you know, where they, they fade out and then fade back in. I mean, I'm like, they don't really do that in movies the same way that they're doing in this it's more like there's there's cuts in there where you know like like expected breaks for like basically commercial breaks, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, you see how that's broken up, right? Yeah. And it's like they made points in there in which, you know, like like uh time points in there in which they expected commercials to be, you know, like they basically accommodated for a TV network to have uh, commercials advertisements and I found out is made for Oxygen and, you know, the the women's TV network. And it's like... But it is, it is worth watching. And, um... Well, there might be something you might want to go get or whatever. Uh, I was at the, uh... The, uh... Squy and CA or whatever today. Yeah. And, uh, it was pretty untubish, but, uh... You should go there and, like, you, you know how that building is set up and all that, right? Like, you've seen the building before? I've seen it from the road, but I've never been in there. Uh, well, basically, there's, like, a foyer, and then you can go into the main part, but you should go in just to the foyer because there's, like, a little free take one. It's, like, a magazine rack, and there's a magazine on there called Woman's World. Mm -hmm. It's not the same one that you see in the lines at, like, Walmart. It's a different one, but I was thinking about taking one to see what was in it, but I didn't. But I imagine it's probably got some poop mallard in there. Yeah, um, now, I'm going to describe something, and I want you to tell me what it reminds you of. <clears throat> what type of ent entity, phenomenon, organization, whatever. Alright. Callous unconcern for the feelings of others, gross and persistent attitude of irresponsibility and disregard for social, social norms, rules, and obligations, <clears throat> incapacity to maintain enduring relationships, though having no difficulty in establishing them, low tolerance to frustration and low threshold for discharge of aggression, including violence, incapacity to, uh, to experience guilt or to profit from experience, especially or particularly punishment, markedly prone to blame others or to offer plausible ras uh, ra uh, rationalizations for the behavior that has brought the person into conflict with society. What does that remind you of? Hmm. Hmm. That's like feminist. Yes. Yes, go on. Hmm, it also sounds like a certain person. I know that you probably, uh, yeah, uh, a certain person that you used to have living in your apartment. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, does it a uh, does it describe a broader segment of the population? Not really, because you know, not all women are like that. <laughs> but they actually are, aren't they? A good amount of them are. Yeah, most. Pretty much. What eighty, ninety percent? Mm, yeah, at least seventy-five percent, <laughs> if not more. And uh, yeah. I'm generous here, you know. I don't want to, you know. I want to basically, you know, say that, you know. But there's like, it's probably much, much, much more than 75%. I'm just, you know, going to throw that out there just to be a little fair, you know. You know what I uh, actually, you know what I was reading to you? Mm. The definition of a sociopath or also known as antisocial personality disorder? Pretty unbeakish. Yeah. And, uh... Sounds like they're hating too, but... Yep, and that's what I was describing. So, so... 
that that <clears throat> when you see how Jennifer Love Hewitt, her character, oh, did you know she was like the executive producer or executive director of that movie, Confessions of a Sociopathic Social Climber? What now? What did you say? Jennifer Love Hewitt, who's the main actor in that movie, yes. mm -hmm. also was either the executive director or the executive executive producer. That's funny. Hmm. I mean, she had some input on the movie. Yeah, um... Also, you know, she apparently agrees with the way things are portrayed in the movie. Just to even be involved with it. Yeah, I'm looking it up. Uh, Confessions of a... So... See, I... Um... Alright, here it is. Confessions of a Sociopathic Social Climber. <clears throat> um... It was directed by somebody, and then I'm going to look it up on Internet Movie Database. And, um, oh, Colin Ferguson, he's the main guy that gets uh, sexually objectified. Yeah. Oh, he was, okay, he would have been, like, um, 32 in that movie. He would have been about the age that I am now. Uh, he would have been about my age, and, um. Well, let's see. Look on the Internet Movie Database page. And, um, let's see. Oh, come on. Um, USA. Uh, the, well, no, I don't need the, the calendar date for it. It was like Jennifer Love Hewitt It was in the, the credits for, um, like, executive, pro executive producer or, like, whatever. <clears throat> But it was for, um, they don't really tell, um, yeah, it was made for the Oxygen Network, released on March 12th of 2005, based on the novel from, you know, of the same name, which is Confessions of a Sociopathic Social Climber, by Adele Lang, um, and, uh, yeah, and, uh, it's just... It's just pretty, you know, it's pretty revealing, but, oh, it has, oh, here's more information on it, yeah. But it has a silver lining because she learns the error of her ways and decides to go honest and treat people better. Meh. Do you buy into that? No. <laughs> but, um, she, uh, um, let's see, uh... Who has the credits on it? Uh, full cast and crew. Um, oh, the, come on, come on. Um, it was pretty... Okay. Oh, come on. Legend of the Tube of Babies. It was... Um, it was... She was in the credits on there, and, like... Um, oh, yeah, here it is. Executive Consultant. That's what Jennifer Love Hewitt, the main actor, was for that movie, the executive consultant. Yeah, I've been meaning to ask for, like, oh, uh, not meaning to ask you, but, like, I've been thinking about this for a while or whatever. What the fuck does a producer even do? Like, I don't understand, because it seems so vague. I mean, what, what does a producer do? Well, I can look it up. Yeah, um, obviously, we'll see. I mean, if you have to look it up, do you even know what it means? I mean, I'm not, not... Not like trying to put you down, but it's almost like I know what it, I know vaguely what it means, but at the same time, it's like, what the fuck do they do? I mean, obviously, a director, they film the movie, they direct, you know, the shots and the way things are done, but what the fuck does a producer do? Well, what a producer, it says film producer uh, oversees and delivers a film project to the film studio or other financial entity while preserving the integrity, the voice, and vision of the film. Um, <clears throat> They will also they will also often take some financial risk by using their own money, especially during post production period before the film is fully financed. Um, from what I understood is like, you know, the, you know, there's like a, a triangle that goes on, sort of, um, you know, where it starts with, you know, at least creatively, it starts with the writer, you know, and somebody that that writes it and screen and writes the screenplay. 
Then that's taken to the director, as the way I understand it, and then the director actually operate, you know, you know, that is involved, you know, on the execution of it. You know what I'm saying? To to film the movie and all that, and then the producer actually puts it all together after it's filmed. That was my understanding of it. Okay. Um, sense. That's what I always thought. You know, it's 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 the you know the story is handed off from the writer to the director. The director actually, you know, basically records everything, uh, shoots the film. Then, as as far as what I thought, the producer would basically take all this film and you know put everything together and assemble everything. I mean, you know what I'm saying, right? They would decide which like which shots to use or whatever out of the ones that were filmed? Oh, it says, okay, the producer is often actively involved throughout all major phases of the filmmaking process, from inception and, envel and development to completion and delivery of a film project. Um, <clears throat> however, the idea or concept for a film can originate with any individual, including screenwriter or a director or a producer. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so a producer is a very important um, person and all that. Um, but, uh, yeah, so would you regard most women as sociopaths? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'd, I'd know that definitely they're... It's, it's pretty fucking prominent. I mean, I would, yeah, I would almost even consider Guns Alive to be one because the whole, like... Oh my God! But yeah, I mean, it, it, it seems to be pretty prominent because you fucking hey, one of the things that like gets to me, and I this might apply to I don't know, but like the thing that I, I consider to be pretty fucking fucked up, or whatever. I don't know, maybe this is something else, but I know for one thing, almost all of them are of the school of thought where if someone doesn't look a certain way, they're automatically a fucking child monster or a rapist or a creepy person. Yeah. That shit is pretty warped, I would say. Like, I mean, you gotta be pretty fucking self-involved and obsessed with yourself in order to just judge someone completely. Like, not only just to be like, well, that's a person who does such that's just like, well, that's, that guy's a child monster. Just, just because. Yeah. I mean, that, oh my god, it gets on my fucking nerves so much. It's like the stupidest thing ever. Like, Oh, so you don't even know who the fuck that person is, and they're doing certain things that you have done yourself, but when they do it, it makes them a child molester. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, I mean, like, <clears throat> but, like, you know, you would regard what we do as basically... We have a think tank, and we analyze all this stuff for what it really means as much as possible, right? Mm-hmm. And, um... <clears throat> what it really means, but it's like, it's just, you analyze this stuff because when someone does this stupid shit, you have to, you have to, analyze, like, why would someone do this? Like, and it's not even, like, it's almost like we would have, we would analyze it anyway. If it, it's, we just happen to analyze it and share it with other people. But, I mean, we would do this anyway because we did this anyway before we even started, like, you know, making videos or whatever. We would, like, you know, like, hang out or whatever, and it's like, yeah, let's see what happens. And then you have to, like, sit there, talk about it, and then we, you, you get it out there, and then you get to think and, like, throw out, like, well, why does this happen? And you have to because you have to basically stop and, and observe what you're doing and, and so you can keep from getting your ass in trouble, right? It's become so convoluted and fucking retarded that you have to analyze it because otherwise you'll go insane because I mean as far as this, this shit is so stupid that it becomes a matter of is this even real this is so fucking ridiculous is this even really happening yeah. like you don't sit there and think about why it happened or, or like it's just like okay someone does something that's like the complete opposite of what would be expected and you have to sit there and be like what the fuck why did they just why did they do that yeah, because and then you, 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 when you, that becomes the first question, and then you, you learn why. Like you, you start to think about it, and then you learn why, and you're like, well, what the fuck? And it like destroys the it destroys the like I don't know, it destroys the ideas you had about something, and lets you see how things really are. 
Yep. It's like, oh, well, I thought things were this way. Well, no, actually, they're the complete opposite. It's like people are always telling you that, you know, your whole life, oh, well, where's how things are? Why'd you tell me that? It's not how things are. You know, uh, just the other day, and I, luckily I, I screen shoot like everything, like I just did. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, uh, on Friday, you know, today's Sunday, right? Well, I, I posted on Friday, you know, about these women. Um, the, the, you know, the, um, oh, what it is? It's uh, the Fem TV. That's the YouTube user. Yeah. Well, guess what? Just in two days' time, they went from like. All comments are enabled and all that, and you can post just like anybody can. Well, <clears throat> I was watching their, vid- their video titled, Why We Identify as Feminists. And you know what I said on theirs? I, I commented on their channel, and I said, you like the Trojan horse defini- definition of feminism. Uh, you know, why not? And, like, and then I noticed, like, all of a sudden now, like, all comments are disabled for this video. Oh, is that is that like is this the same thing you were talking about yesterday, whatever? Where you're like you were just asking questions and they yep. deleted all your shit, basically. That's right, and they they yeah they 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 did, and luckily I took screenshots to even prove that I made comments. You know how fucking you know how fucking <clears throat> petty and childish that is. Like it's like supposedly you know we're putting this up here so we can educate people. It's like if someone questions, you know, but I mean as far as they're concerned, you you just want to know why something is a certain way so you can help out, right? I mean, you want to be... I mean, that's the way it seems to me. Like, if you ask questions about something, usually it's to, you know, well, I just want to understand it so I can be a member. But they don't, you know, they don't even fucking answer... Did they even answer your questions? Or did they just delete them? Well, they answered them at first. They just basically... Because of the patriarchy. Yeah, so basically they tell you the answer, and then when that's not what, you know, most they just want everyone to accept what they feed them. And since you didn't immediately be like, oh, well, that makes sense. Uh, like, oh, shit, he's asking more questions. Well, well fuck, just really shit. Nah. How fucking child is. I mean, <clears throat> once again, they just, they expect so much shit to fucking conform to their desires and expectations. Yep. Two and weeks like ago. They don't want to bother explaining themselves, and they just want to have everyone swallow their fucking lies, and then when someone doesn't, they get all pissy about it. And act like a total fucking baby. Yep. Because heaven forbid someone actually form an opinion on their own or decide that they don't want to be a part of that shit. Like, oh my god, so, uh, if someone tries recruiting me into that shit or whatever, and like when I go to school or whatever, if someone tries to recruit me into that shit, <clears throat> I'm just going to laugh in their fucking face. Like, why? Or, or better yet, it just asks them, well, well uh, sounds like, my, 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 but why would I want to, why would I want to take part in this, my, my, and just see what they say. Well, don't you want to help out women? Not really. Women are strong and independent. They can help themselves. <laughs> Act like, like, obviously, as far as I'm concerned, I actually do believe that, you know, because um, that's what I've been told my whole fucking life. And uh, I can see, basically, I'm not going to say, well, that's what I've been told, so I believe it. But that's what I've been told this whole time. And then when I can actually, I can analyze, you know, I can look at someone these people are capable of supporting themselves. They just choose not to. It's That's not that true. they couldn't be strong and independent. They just don't want to. That would be a commitment they don't want to make. Because they are the ones that are commitment phobes. Yeah. So it's just like, you know, when they act like, when, when they, you know, <clears throat> they, they can be strong and independent if they actually wanted to put the work in to do it, but they don't want to, and that's why they're not. Well, I, I talked about earlier in this video about, um... But they are capable of it, and then, when, you know, someone was like, well, we need your help, women, mama, I'd, be, I'd just be like, well, well, as far as I knew, women were strong and independent. Why, why should I have to help them anymore? And then it essentially would come, well, you don't hate women, do you? Mama, you should help us. like, no, you know, I have, I have better fucking... Why do I give a fuck? I'm not a woman, you know? I, I'm more concerned about my own fucking gender. Like, no, I'm not going to help you fucking group spread hate. No, I don't need to do that. I can sit at home and, you know, even if I'm not, you know, I'd rather not help anyone than help you. <laughs> uh, you know, and I mentioned earlier in this video, it was like five hours ago, <clears throat> about um, how women are oppressed only by their own choices. Exactly. Like, okay, you know, 
know, you always see this feminist, it's like, oh, porn is a pressure to women. It's like, no, no. Uh, I mean, you can argue that other women are oppressed by it, but uh, that's only because they're not getting they're not getting the goods from a man because, you know, men can look at porn and not have to worry about, you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, what is it? Um, man, woman, myth, or somebody talked about that. It, it lessens the the dependency that men have upon women. Yeah, and then they become, you know, essentially... Independent. Yeah. And, uh... And which shows that women do not want men to achieve de independence, do they? No, they don't. And, like, um... So anyway, it's like, well, it pressures the women that are in it. It's like, no, those fucking women decided that, that you know, someone's going to pay me money to have sex with someone else. Okay, because I do that anyway. So why not do it for pay? I mean, fuck. They chose to do that. They drove to that place or, you know, whatever. They went to the place where this was going to go down. They showed up and were willing to do it, and they probably signed some type of contract or whatever. <laughs> you know, to certify their certain age or for whatever reason, and then they do it, they get paid at the end of the day. I mean, do you think that they're getting paid and then, like, burning their paychecks or something? <laughs> like they did bras 40 years ago? Uh, no, they're getting paid and they're loving it. They're spending, maybe not loving their job, but they, you know, maybe to them that's what a hard labor job is to a man. Like, and that, Well, that's why they call it a working girl. Remember the, the, the nickname for a prostitute is a working girl? Yep. You've heard that, right? And, I mean, really, <clears throat> this goes into how women see men. I mean, women want men to be slaves. And, really, the porn... See, I believe I was the person who got comments disabled for the videos because it was only two days ago when I commented, and all of a sudden they're not, you know, like, nobody can comment on the videos anymore. But I believe... Uh, did they talk about... Did they... Uh, was it porn or whatever? And I asked about that, you know? Like, I asked, I thought I asked that to them. You know, it's like, what about women in porn, like, in an industry? Like, you know, it's like, well, it's you look at it, it's women just voluntarily doing this stuff. I mean, like, is the patriarchy making them do it or whatever? Mm -hmm. And I guess it's more the invisible gun theory, right? I guess so. And, uh, <clears throat> but I mean, still, porn... As far as, uh, the way I see it is, they probably look at that job like the way that one of us would look at a job like, oh, here's a job cutting wood. It's like, yeah, it kind of sucks, but, you know, it pays money, it is a job. And, it, but to them, to them, it's almost not even a, it is a job, but it's only a job in the sense that they may have to do something they not, they may not necessarily want to do. Mm -hmm. But they still do it, and that's their choice to do it. And, yeah, they'll have sex with a guy who they're not attracted to because it pays their bills. Exactly. And all they really have to do is fake the enthusiasm. That's all they really have to do. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you know, they got to do other disgusting things. Like, you know, here's a face full of jizz. But, you know, they knew the risks when they signed up for it. Yeah, and, I mean, where was the gun to their head, you know? Was there? No, there wasn't one. Okay, so, uh... Anyway, another thing is, um, you know, uh, porn, you know, it, it's, it's, what it is is it's an illusion of independence for men because although they might not be as directly dependent upon women for, you know, in, in the conventional sense of having sex with a woman to relieve sexual tension or, or to relieve tension they are still psychologically dependent upon women. I mean, you still see the link, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, that, that reminds me of something real quick. Whatever. Um, so, you know, you know, um, you know that friend I have who's a girl, right? Like, pretty much our only friend who's a girl? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, well, that ties into some, a story I'm going to tell you, but, um, well, first things first. You also know a certain someone by the name of Gunsley, I'm correct? Yeah, Gunsley. And you know how her stance is when it comes to uh, potential mate selection and all that. <laughs> it's pretty poor. Yeah, like, well, not even the selection choice isn't poor, but the fact that the process of selection is poor. Like, well, well I'm only gonna, you know, only talk to basically. She still thinks it's apparently like, you know, I don't know, high school or something. 
like, the maze of youth or whatever. You know, she thinks that she can demand all these things but not give anything in return and actually succeed. Oh, so it's like a credit card with an unlimited debt level that, that can be achieved? Well, yeah, apparently she thinks that she can, like, uh, she thinks that she can get something... Benefit without sacrifice. Yeah, like, she thinks she can get, like, a Rob... Not, not, you know, I'm just going to say this because it's, like, a phrase, but a Robert Pat. She thinks she can get a typically, you know, a typical attractive, you know what I mean? And, like... Without actually offering, you know, she just thinks like, oh, that's the way things should be. So she always goes for those types and then wonders why, you know, it's not the way, you know, it's, oh, I want my own. And it's not only because she picked the wrong one, but also because, you know, she's uh, fucking nuts. Most of the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you've seen, you've seen Guns Lines tirades, right? Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, so, uh, anyway, uh, so that's like a big issue or whatever. And uh wait a second. But anyway, uh, that friend of mine, her mom's the same way. And, oh, uh, on this 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 one dangerous game, tropes versus women bullying. Uh I don't want to like the video in order to in a way kind of bookmark it, you know, on my channel so I can remember that I viewed it. Just bookmark it. Well, no, but what I'm doing is I'm I'm commenting on it, which will show up. Because I got so many bookmarks, it'll just get lost in the whole shuffle. Yeah, like two baby magic soul right? So face. they're the ones that are bitching about how hard it is for women in the gaming community and all that. So Whatever. like, I'm gonna comment. I'm saying strong, strong and independent. <laughs> question mark. Yeah, mark. question mark. Yeah, it's literally on there, and I'm gonna click post right now. And uh, uh, gonna... what is that thing? You were supposed to decorate them in pretty clothes. Okay. And he made that. That one guy looks like a solid bit mud. <laughs> well, um, anyway, continue. Edit. Yeah, so then basically, and I took a screenshot, and this is all captured on video to prove that there were comments enabled. So you can, you know, you can leave comments and all that. And we'll see. Look, here's the clock. It, it's it's 10, 27 p.m. I want to see how long it takes before... That little comment there, strong and independent, as a question, before it, it, it causes them to change their policy about whether or not they want to enable comments and responses on their, their channel. Yeah. Basically, I'm running a test right now. Well, um, frack, frack what, what is going on here? Um, one second. Um, the dungeon, okay, what the fuck? Well, that's not, in, um... Well, anyway, so that friend of mine, her mom's like that, like Guns Line, same same concept, you know. I'm gonna go for this, even though, uh, especially with my friend's mom, um, she's literally like, I mean, she has nothing to offer. I'll just say that, <laughs> like nothing at all. She's not attractive, and she's old, doesn't take care of herself, and you know. She still expects like people to throw themselves at her. <laughs> Shows the they're the not. female nature. Yeah, they're not doing that. So uh, then, um, the fuck is with this map? It's not working right. Um, well, anyway, she still expects people to do that, and they don't. But you know, she's always picking her wrong types for for who she is. You know, they're not gonna they're not gonna get with her because she's not you know nothing to offer. She doesn't have a good personality. In fact, she's even more volatile than Guns of Lion. No fuck. And um, she also, you know, has less to offer than Guns of Lion in terms of look. You know, at least Leslie or Guns of Lion. She's not a. Basically, this woman is just. Uh, she has like fake teeth because they all fell out. She's a blob. It, just no, okay. And she still thinks that you know she deserves all these like oh guys. And she gets all pissy when they don't go for her, which naturally they're not fucking going to. Well, anyway, um, so like, uh, anyway, so they both, they both, uh, Guns Live and this person both have the same basic mindset when it comes to this, this type of shit. But, um, anyway, um, my friend was telling me how, um, her, her, uh, mom was like, some guy apparently wants to get 
with her, and he's like not all there in the head or whatever. <laughs> and sounds uh, like really high standards. Yeah, but you know, uh, go go pet some. But you know, like what she says or whatever in response to that, like she's like, well, well, you know, she should date him because he's really sweet. And I was like, oh, okay, whatever. But you know what? The second thing was that, mm -hmm. that she said he should. She, her, her mother should date this guy because he's really sweet and he waits on her hand and foot. A slave. Yeah, that's why she stayed him. <laughs> oh my gosh. I was just like, what the fuck? And I was just like, I didn't even say anything except, like, I didn't say anything to, to, uh, against that or whatever. I was just like, I, I said, I was like, well, you know, so I know him, Guns of Lion, um... She needs to just get the fuck over herself and uh, settle for less in order to be happy. You know, she wants to be so fucking happy. Like a man would have to do, right? Yeah, exactly. And, you know, that's what she... she it's almost like she... I don't know, maybe it's just because, like, the... Well, no, that doesn't make sense. But anyway, like, the last dude, whatever she's with, he just stopped coming around or whatever, and probably... I don't, probably, I don't blame him, because... Probably he saw how guns lie max. Yeah. And I mean, shit, he probably didn't want to put up with it. It wasn't worth the effort, you know. And like, you know, of course she's all like, Aah. I was like, well, you know, I'm not really surprised because. Oh, Abhi Nav is in India. That's where he, you know, that's his region of where he goes. That's bronchially. Yeah. But anyway, I mean, see, how, yeah. It's like, no, I mean, if she really wanted to get somebody, she could. But she'd have to compromise, and that's not going to happen. <laughs> I mean, you don't think it's going to happen, do you? Because I know it's not going to. No, sacrifice? Oh, that's only for men. Oh, yeah, you're right. Sounds about right. No, he's been to Walt Disney World also. No, wait, that's... Okay, um... Maybe. I've been there, and it sucked. Um, but, uh... But, uh, I think it's maybe where he's been. But anyway, can you believe that dude still has not accepted my friend request? Which one? Uh, Abhinav, the really badass dude that, you know, the one that's like, I would tell you to go get married. Or he's like, he's like, I would tell you to go fuck yourself, but I got something worse. Go get married. But he already was your friend on there. Well, on the other account. Okay, so why is he accepted? Is he not her? Who, uh, who that is or whatever? I guess. Something like that. I'm not sure. Maybe. I don't know what the deal is. I want a motherfucker to go fucking pet something, yeah. Well, he pet does that. pet it in his heart and soul. He just doesn't know it. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Well, anyway, uh, pet some beaks. What thing want to go over? Uh, well, I'm going to end this recording now. And then, uh, just, um, um, like, like, how soon do you think you would? I can leave, like, right now. Well, make sure you got your storage devices, because um, I got some more stuff for the vidlib, and you should definitely check out this movie. And uh, it's 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 only like an an hour and twenty eight minutes or something like that. It's not very long. And yeah, well, uh, pet magic beak, so, uh... And we got to check out this C panel because like there's all kind of features that are on, that's on the server that I you know rent from. Yeah, pet it. Um, there, yeah, there's all kind, of, there's all kind of features we can do, and I didn't even know we could do them because they just went to a whole new like management system, like in oh, terms yeah, of server. Oh yeah, need to get you that Haiti Perry. Yes, that's true. Uh, yeah, okay. Now I wasn't gonna bring my external, but I guess I have to. Uh, yeah, I'll bring that, and I'll bring a uh, extra uh, flash drive just so it'll be easier to transfer things without yeah. having it, cause like my uh, stuff's all on my main flash drive yeah so uh, i'll bring extras to transfer files with and uh pets and beak bronco two wait wait wait, wait magic child nose <laughs> wait 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 um while we're still on here um okay I, i've i've you know made a tutorial about you know building your your vid lib your video library but i mean people have heard it from me but i think they need to hear it from you also because you know you you do this too and uh, because we both do it and came up with the concept and all that, um, explain to the people listening what our vidlib is, our video library. Explain why we do it, what it is, and you know, and what we use it for. Well, I keep mine on my external hard drive, which is a terabyte in capacity, and essentially just you save videos 
that either they can be something that, I mean, fuck, they could be something like a music video from a poop mouth. <laughs> it could be, you know, a commercial that has poop mouthery in it. It could be like a, a movie that you have either in an ISO that you ripped off of a DVD or it could be, you know, a downloaded movie or it could be a movie that you ripped and then transcoded. But most of mine is uh, videos from users like Man, Woman, Myth, Barbarossa, Stardust, Girl Rights What, The Cynical Cynicism, Snake Pliskinist, people like them. I don't really have very many um, from uh, Rock and Mystery because, like, he's kind of lightweight. And uh, anyway, so you put all that shit on your hard drive so you can watch it and keep it and... Well, obviously you watch it, but you keep it in case, you know, there's other people that you can show it to. Or in case you want to go over it again and pick up on something you might have missed earlier. You keep it there so you can study it, or, you know, you know, you may need to watch it more than once just to understand what it's even saying to you. Yeah, and when did we start doing this? Fuck, about, like, a year ago or whatever? Mm, yeah, roughly. But we did it with movies, though, right? Yeah, we started watching movies. Well, actually, it was even before that, because, like, even when your poop mouth was there, we would just bitch about uh, how interactions are. And your poop mouth would be all, I don't want to hear this. It makes me depressed. <laughs> I don't give a shit. <laughs> you know how much you know how depressed this made me over the years before I realized it didn't matter? Yeah, and it did it to me during your whole lifetime, you know what I'm saying? And I mean, uh, it's been happening to me since I was like, let's see, since I was in like 7th grade, 7th or 8th grade, I think it was... So what year would that have been? 7th grade, which would be like, oh fuck, um, 2000. Four or so, so it's been since I was around 12 this, that I've had to put up with this shit. Like, basically, the first time that I learned how things really were, I was, like, around 12 years old, and it was the first girl I had a crush on, and she was my friend and all, and I wrote, like, a letter or whatever to her. I was like, man, man, so I like you. I didn't even, you know, this is before I was even, like, I didn't know how relationships or anything were. I was just like, oh, I like you. I want to be your boyfriend. It's like, you know, that bullshit, the high school bullshit. Mm -hmm. Not even high school, junior high. First school I had a crush on, and it was, like, completely innocent. And uh, I was like, oh, I want to be your, your boyfriend. My, my. I gave her this note, and uh, uh, so then what happened was I had given it. I, I didn't get to give it personally to her because I didn't see her before I went to class or whatever, but I had these two friends that knew her that were girls, and I was like, they're like, I was like, can you give this to such and such? And I'm like, yeah, we'll be it, man. And they were all, like, giggly about it because they knew what it was about, but they weren't being, like, they weren't giggling, like, in a bitch way. They were just like, oh, how cute. You know, I such and such. Well, then I went to class, and I saw that the girl that I liked there, and she was acting, like, really unusual, like, like, she was acting like extra happy and like nice. I was like, I was like, oh, this is good news. She must have got my letter. And she's like totally psyched about it. Mwah. Yeah. Well, then uh, I didn't say anything to her about it. And then like, I think there was like two, you know, two classes later, lunchtime. I hadn't seen her between things. I didn't have any class with her. I remember going in the lunchroom and I see her coming in like fucking bawling, you know, like tears everywhere, all down her face, and, and essentially she was crying because I, I guess, had the nerve to ask her to be, you know what I mean? <clears throat> oh, there's the risk of obligation to somebody who she wasn't interested in. Exactly, like she was so, it was almost like she was disgusted, but she, you know, I don't know, but she just acted like it was the most horrible possible thing that could happen to someone like her. And I, there was never even a discussion after that, and I haven't, I haven't really talked to her since then, because that like destroyed our friendship apparently, because you know she could no longer trust me. I guess like she never talked to me again, and I didn't even know how to try to talk to her, because you know gotta give her their space, you know, so they don't, you know, 
Yeah, you know, give them their space. I had to give her her space. And, give her her um, space so she's not oppressed. Yep, she got her space, and we, I mean, I've talked to her a couple times since then, like, just because she used to work next to where I work, and I saw her, she's like, she tried to make contact with me, she's like, oh, hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? But I didn't like, you know, I essentially couldn't be friends with her anymore after that, because that is just, you know, the lowest thing I could do, apparently. It's the it's the betrayal, and really it's her fault because it, it, initially she was flattered, right? No, I don't even think that's... What, maybe she'd gotten it, but no, I, I don't think she'd gotten it yet, and that's why she was... At, I think I think I was just looking for that, you know, like, oh, I just like, oh, I happen to notice that she was acting a certain way, and I didn't really think anything of it, and then I just kind of like, I don't even think she had gotten it, so I don't think she was, like, I don't think she got an ego boost and then decided to, like, you know, retract her previous feelings. I think she genuinely just hadn't gotten it yet, and when she did get it, it, like, apparently was, like, the worst possible thing that could happen, I guess. Is that where you got your dark passenger? Uh, no, I wouldn't even, no, I wouldn't even say then, because I was still global. uh, until, like, 2011. Same thing for me, too, right? Until late 2011, would you regard it? Well, you after that, that was just, like, my initial thing where I started to see, like, you know, well, you know, because up till then, I, I'd still, you know, I'd, I'd always heard, you know, well, girls just want a nice guy, and obviously it's not the case, and uh, that was the first time where I learned that. Yeah. I mean... Um, when would you say you picked up your, um, your dark passenger? Fuck, the late 2011. I mean, that's when I started to actually, I'd already seen all the, like, I'd already seen all the hypocrisy. I just didn't know why someone would do that. Like, well, why, why are they saying something that they don't actually believe? But around late 2011, I started getting explanations for why, you know, I'm going to start watching videos and seeing it's like, oh, so this isn't just me. It's actually happening all everywhere, pretty much. And we did the hardcore study by first examining movies such as The Room and Bill's Gun Shop, right? Yeah, well, first thing that happened was we would, like, be at your house hanging out, and we'd start being like, you know, it's like, you know, you know what happened to me, my, my, comparing experiences and then noticing patterns. But then it's like... I would, I would be watching a movie, and I would notice that there's, you know, something not right happening. You know, like, what? You know, that's not what they say. They say that it's the opposite way. And then I was like, or or it would sh it would show a good example of how they operate. It was like, the first, I think the first movie that had uh, that in it was, uh, actually one of the first movies that we started watching was Fight Club, because I mentioned it one day, and you're like, you're like, you know what I watched that the other day? And, it's got a lot of stuff in it. And I was like, yeah. And we started watching that, and we noticed that Marla Singh is a poop mouth bitch. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. And there's a reason, like, even a year ago, exactly a year ago, it was still, you know, in, in January of uh, 2012, I was still watching Fight Club literally every day. Yeah. But, I mean, before you started doing that, we watched, we, you know, we started watching that. But then I was like, I was like, I initially got the movie The Room because it was like a big meme or whatever. I was like, I got to see this movie because it sounds pretty fucked up, pretty funny or whatever. I got it and I was like, I was like, hey, you got to check out this movie. Look at it. Look at. It. I think I, I'm pretty sure that I was uh, that I was like, you got to see the poop Mallory in it before it even became what it is now. Yeah. I was just like, you got to see how much of a poop mouth bitch is. Watch the movie and then it's like, I got Bill's gun shop. I don't even remember, I think I just found that, I found that movie at, like, movie store, and it sounded interesting, I was like, I don't want to watch it, because I like guns, and I watched it, I was like, man, look at, look at the way this poop mouth's acting, and then it's like, I think the next movie after that was probably like, fuck, I don't even know, like, hmm, um, American Beauty, I know at some point I showed you that. That's right, I have it on DVD and Blu-ray, uh, you have it on, uh, VHS, but do you have it on any other type of medium? I've got the other songs like I don't remember where I got it from it's not an ISO no I actually no I do have an ISO of it I ripped it off I rented it and ripped uh, the ISO um but I have it on pretty much everything except for 
VHS and presumably if it was ever on Laserdisc, but I got it on I bought it on both DVD and Blu-ray. Well, you were there when I bought it on Blu-ray. I bought it with that computer yep. uh, back in uh April is like April 5th of 2012. I seen it for like, I don't know, was it like was movies, 10 or like, 12 bucks? There was movies like Jarhead was pretty influential like in a way, you know, it had some good content in it. Uh Yeah. Uh let's see. Um other movies. Uh, I'm looking at my movies. I don't see too many. Um, I mean, I remember there being a lot. I'm just trying to remember which ones were which. Oh, uh, uh, Lost in Translation. That's kind of got some poop mallory in it. Oh yeah, Scarlett Johansson. Actually, she's been typecasted as a cunt, and I wonder why. I mean, she dis displays natural aptitude. Remember that movie uh, called He's Just Not That Into You? Yeah, she's horrible in that movie. Well, she acts pretty much the same way as she does in um, in uh, uh, Lost in Translation. You know, it's the whole commitment, fear kind of shit, you know? Flirting with a guy, leading a dude on. Yep. And, um, let's see. Uh, what can I do? What can I do? Uh, oh, well, shit, there's another, a couple. Well, basically, a double dose, uh... The four-year-old version's pretty illuminating, so is, uh, forget especially Forgetting Sarah Marshall. That one's classic. Yeah, I got that on DVD. You've got it on DVD. I had the opportunity to get it on Blu-ray. Um, let's see. I still haven't watched that one movie that, like, I let you borrow recently and you ripped it. I haven't watched it yet, but, uh, it sounds like it's got some good stuff in it. Uh... Anyway, you know, other ones, there's still ones you haven't even watched that I've given you, like Eyes Wide Shut, that's got some good poop mallory in it. I've shown you, like, the some of the scenes that are in it that are particularly in bad taste, but, like, there's just generally, it's like an experience to watch the movie and see why it's so poop mallory because it's more than just that scene. It's like a, you know, it's just like uh, with any movie, if you pay attention to it, fuck. I mean... It's it's just like all there to see. It's almost like all this stuff's written in invisible ink, and you have to use you know the decoder you know like to see it. Yeah. Like it's all there. It's just you didn't know to even you didn't realize it before because it's so ingrained in culture that it's like you know fuck. So how would you answer Anita Sarkeesian? Where she basically describes that everything in everything in all media and everything is harmful to women. How would I describe her? How would you answer that? How would you go up against that? How would you deal with it? I would uh, basically be like, whatever, bitch, I don't want to fucking hear it because look at all this goddamn, uh, look at all this, this ingrained hatred of men in society. Yeah. And it's like, you know... I don't even know what to say because honestly, it's like, you know, half of the shit that they bitch about is stuff that if they would actually get off their ass and go do it, they could do it. It's like, well, you know, well, fun, or it can easily be refuted. Like, well, uh, the wage gap. It's like, the wage gap exists because you don't want to fucking work the same goddamn hours as anyone else. Well, it's not even a wage gap. It's more like a paycheck gap, isn't it? Exactly. You're because right. we. Because, I mean, a wage gap is just like a misnomer. It, no, it, there's no such thing because wage is, is, it's like... It's all been standardized, right? It's governed by someone, and they make sure that everyone gets the same amount of money. Like, when you start a job, you get the same amount. You can get raises, but, I mean, shit, there were people, there were girls working there before I worked there at Wendy's, and they had more, they were making more money than I was, but I didn't bitch about it. And that's because they've been on the job longer than you have, right? So they had, you know, they would gotten more raises because they'd been there longer, yet they supposedly still made less money than other people. They made less money than you overall at the end of the week because they didn't work as many hours as you. Exactly, and, and actually, they could work less hours than I did and still make more money than me because they were making more money. Yes, because they were on a wage, but eventually you would surpass them because... Uh, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying that if they even... I'm saying... If they worked the equal amount of hours that, that you did, then they would have more money. If they worked the equal hours that I did, they would have a ton more money than me. But I'm saying they could even work less hours than a normal, like, you know what I mean? They could work less hours and still make more money than me because they were making more more wages, you know? Yeah. 
But they wouldn't even work that. They wouldn't even make. They wouldn't even work enough to make up my paycheck, let alone theirs. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because they just didn't want to fucking do it. And uh, fucking, it's just it's fucking pathetic. Like, no, I don't feel sorry for them at all. Like, no, you know, because you. Now I don't know how shit works in fucking other jobs or whatever, where it's like a corporate environment where you know maybe things are different. But I'll I'll know one I know one thing. Um, corporate jobs nowadays give women more advantages than men have, and they want more women working jobs there than than they do men. Yeah, Aaron Pitsy talks about that. Exactly. What is it like forty? They want forty percent of a uh, at least forty percent of all like the top dogs or whatever in a company to be women. Yeah, they want quite a bit. They, they, you know, I talked about that in this video that I'm still recording about how women, they want these positions of power so that they can have the authority to then reshape the world as they see fit. And they, you know, they want to be able to say, you know, to pretend they're important. Yeah, I mean, they just, um, uh, but anyway, as for the, um, Wage thing, we've been through this back in the 1970s. That was like 40 years ago. You know, equal pay for equal work. They've already did that. Yeah, it's like, get the fuck over it. It's just like a sandwich meme. Get the fuck over it. Get some new material. Yeah, I mean, like, we've already went through... Um, we, we've already went through that wage thing. They've already basically achieved that. It's, like, it's just like they already have the right to... Uh, they already have the right to legalize infanticide, so... What else do they have to fucking fight over? I mean, they've already, they've got equal rights under the law. No, they've got equal privilege under the law. Fuck, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, they've 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 not only got they they've, they've only got equal equal rights under the law. Well, I can't even say that it's equal because it's not. They've got privilege and rights under the law. And matter of fact, you know you know the things that they've actually cheated themselves out of mm. is equal responsibility under the law. That's right. They also have tons of privileges. They have the right to, uh, you know, abort their children, even though, you know, they have the right to choose whether or not a child is to live when the men don't. And they already choose who gets laid in society. They make, see, it's a thing. That's where it really, people really need to understand. Women make most of the decisions in society, so if anything, society's fucked up because of women. And, and, but see, the proof, you know, in that we let women make the, you know, that women have the decision-making power is that if we don't let them have decision-making power, they'll fucking invade that space too and fucking piss and moan and bitch and whine until they fucking get it. Yeah, and see, like, the thing I hate is, um, it's like, they know that they're full of shit when they say, you know, oh, we need this, this, and this. They know because look at how they treat everyone and do everything. Yeah. I mean, they they know that they already do all this shit. They know that they have all the power, and yet they still want more. And, you know, actually, that reminds me, that puppet show that I had to go to today at the Y or whatever. Yeah. Uh, it, it was actually pretty fucking good because uh, it was, like, one one thing. But basically, it might as well have been a play. It wasn't really even a puppet show because they had live actors. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, like, it was essentially it was one story, but it was three versions of the story. And the first version was pretty goddamn good because, uh, you know what it was about? What's oh, that? It was about uh, a greedy wife. Mm. Uh, basically, it was the fisherman and his wife, uh, the old story or whatever. And here's what happened. So, fisherman and his wife. The fisherman, like, is kind of a, he's kind of a derp. Like, he's totally, basically, he's fine with his station of life, which is to be a fisherman, which is he goes out every day and works and doesn't expect any more than that, really. And so, the, the right off of the beginning, he's, like, all happy, you know, to go do his job or whatever. And because, you know, it's all kid-friendly. Like, oh, yeah, I love doing my job. And he's, like, about to go get some fish. His wife, like, pops out and she's like, you better bring back a fish or else. And he's just like, he's like, uh-oh, I better bring back fish or else my wife will, he says, my wife will flog my buns. She'll uh, beat him, you know, she'll beat him with something. Physical violence. Yeah. And, uh, so anyway, so he goes out there, he's fishing, and he catches the fish. And the fish is like, oh, I'm an enchanted prince, don't eat me, and I'll give you some wishes. And he's just like, 
Yeah, well, actually, no. The, the first story, the fish doesn't even tell him that. The fish is just like, it's like, don't eat me, please. She's like, oh, you can talk? Well, shit, okay, I won't eat you. And he puts him back. <laughs> goes home. And his wife's like, where the fuck is my fish at? And he's like, he's like, well, the fish was talking fish, and so I put him back. She's like, well, well the fish was magic? Well, why the hell didn't you get some wishes from him? And she's like, better, she literally tells him that he better go back there. And, and, and basically, he did something for the fish. So the fish better do something for him. So he yeah. goes back there, tells the fish that, and he's like, you know, my wife says that I should do this for you because, you know, I I saved your life. And and the fish is like, oh, okay, well, that seems a fair deal. And she's like, what do you wish for? He's like, oh, it's not my wish, it's my wife's wish. She's like, well, what does your wife wish for? Well, well, she wants a castle. She wants to be queen. She wants to live in a castle so she can be queen. So he goes <laughs> he goes home. His wife's a queen, and she's like all fucking like. But like cackling evilly, she's like, "Yeah, ha, I'm the queen." And she literally tells the guy, "She's like, you're a piece of dirt. You're nothing." And he's like, "Oh, okay." He's like completely normal, like he's the same person. He's, you know, "Oh, sure, my wife." Blah, blah. Well, that's not enough for her. She wants more. She tells him to go back to the fish, and he goes back to tell the fish the next witch, which is, she wants to be, I think it was. Supreme ruler of the earth, or something. <laughs> she wishes for that, and uh, she gets that way. She goes home, and she's still not happy. She's still a greedy fucking cunt. She tells him to go back again, and that she wants to be a god and rule over the entire universe. He goes back, and uh, he's like, he goes, Well, uh, she wants to be uh, a god, and you know, supreme ruler of the universe. Mm, that, that's not too much, is it? And, and the fish just like, kind of like, That's not too much? That's not too much. He's like, no, that's too much. And he's like, you know what? She doesn't get to have anything now. Takes back all the wishes. And the bitch is all, like, totally pissed off because she doesn't get to have all this power anymore. <laughs> and, like, that was the end of the first story. There's, like, a total of three of them or whatever. And, like, but that was, like, the best one because, like, it just, you know, it had the best puppets overall, probably. And, like, anyway, it was just, you know, it was nice to see, like, how widespread this is and just okay that's like a Grimm's fairy tale supposedly like I think originally it was obviously it's like you know they redo it their own way but just say the original fairy tale was about you know you shouldn't be greedy fuck or you won't have anything you know what I mean like yeah and uh, isn't it pretty fucking ironic well not even ironic but isn't it kind of revealing that back then they even chose to show the greed, like, who's greedy, they chose a woman to portray that role. Well, you know that book I showed you about Freemasonry, written by Manly P. Hall, one of the most... I know, and you, you, I know what you're about to say, you're going to talk about the three, uh... Yep, the three ruffians. And, and about how one of them, which represents, what is it, uh, excessive emotion or something? Yep, that's right. And, uh, it, it's a woman. Yep. Freemasonry is awesome, dude. I mean, if people only knew... It's too bitch. It's 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 approved by you know Monker Lord. Yes, yeah, it's, it's approved by the Tublin Dynasty, the Council of Elders. And the Elder Beak and his teachings. Yeah. Um. But anyway, um. I mean, seriously, like, um, it just shows women's true aspirations, and you know, I talked about in this video about how. You know, men are regarded as the manipulators of of um, of material and you know, and the environment and all that. But women are the manipulators of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that actually seems to be pretty accurate because I mean, you don't see them out there manipulating objects. I mean, uh, let's just look. Let's just well, they re they manipulate objects. They just manipulate responsibility objects like us. Yeah. And uh, anyway, like you see. Look, look, look in, you know, the past, look at history, whatever. You, you, you pretty much never hear of a woman actually. You do occasionally, which is like pretty, I'd say it's pretty inspiring. Because it's like, oh, well, you know, I guess they are capable of not being cunts. Just like, you know, when you see someone like Grew Ice What or someone who actually doesn't buy into the usual bullshit. It's, it's like a breath of fresh air. It's like, wow. Well, I'm a little inspired now because I realize that not everyone's a fucking complete asshole. Yep. But it's like, it's, it almost like loses, it loses all its punch because 
every, for every one person you see that isn't a total fucking cunt, you see like 50 fucking million that are. Yep. I'm installing software right now on Linux using the Synaptic Package Manager. Yep, well, uh, yeah, so if I if I want to come over, I, I need to, like, you know, because it's already 11 o'clock, so. Yeah, um, and, uh, yeah, and I just want to, uh, and I'll probably wrap this up, uh, my interview with the, dis the disposable human doing. I mean, that is what you call yourself, right? Yep. And why do you call yourself with that? Well, let's say, for one thing, because since I'm a man, I'm not a human being. I'm a human doing, because no matter what I, no matter, no matter what value I may have just for existing, it doesn't matter, because I'm not important unless I've done something for someone else. Specifically, I have to do something for a woman in order to be considered a value to society. Yep. And... I'm disposable because I'm a man. It's as simple as that. You know, I'm a man, and so therefore my emotions don't matter. M the way I'm treated doesn't matter. Nothing about me matters because even if I were to go marry a poop mouse and give her her meal ticket and have her pop out kids, if I don't continue to essentially be her slave and give her a paycheck, I'm just going to be tossed aside like last week's news, and my kid's going to be taken with her. Yeah. I mean, that's about as, that's how it happens. Oh, fuck, I've been recording for almost six hours now. Ah, uh, damn, I'm going to have to slice this video a fuck ton. That place or whatever I was at today, whatever, the, 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 uh, the why for that thing, it was like a total family environment, and, uh, you should see how many single moms over there. <sighs> yeah, yeah, what, it's, it's more than half, right? And then even worse, I had to see, like, I had to see actual families... And I'm just wondering, it, it's nice to think that, yeah, they're, they're family right now, but it's like, when when is that going to end? When is she going to decide that that's not enough to keep a guy around for? Oh, speaking of keeping a guy, I got that uh, that article about that guy poked holes in his condom to, uh, to get the girl pregnant because he thought that that would keep her around. Uh, that's pretty fucking funny. Uh I remember people, like, supposedly, uh, I, I remember, like, kind of in high school, someone, like, mentioning that, like, like, basically talking to someone, like, yeah, well, you know, my, my, she's such a, uh, basically some guy or whatever was talking about some chick that's, like, pretty fucking, like, gorgeous or whatever, like, literally this, this chick could, she wouldn't even have to try to be a model, she's already, she could literally go to a model agency, modeling agency, and they would pretty much, Grovel at her feet in order to have her work there. Like, yeah, this girl is. I like, know the type. Ridiculously good looking, and I remember some guy was like, "She's so hot, my, my, I will get with her and, and like get her pregnant just to, you know." He knew that that would be the only. Well, he thought that that would be the only way to keep her around was to have her pop out a kid, but that's not even no. That's not enough. But like he was talking about, basically, she was so attractive that he figured. Just being, just to be able to, not only would he not be able to get with her, but if he did get with her, he would not be able to stay with her. It would be too risky because she's so attractive that she could have any guy she wants. Exactly. So he thought that, you know, the best, the best option would be for him to, you know, well, I poke holes in my car and just get knocked up, my, my. Yeah, I mean, like, women have most of the options, and then the only options that men really have are the ones that they fucking earned. With, with hard work and effort, right? And sacrifice. Yep. And, and women can't understand that. They they see that men have these things, and they and see, that's the thing. Women see that men have these things, but they don't understand how men achieve them, so they just assume that it was automatically given, and which is then what women try to do. They try to achieve that where they're automatically given things just because they want them, because that's how they perceived that men got them. Yeah, even though it's like not it's like they they read a situation wrong and they think that that's how it is and it's not and then they do their equivalent of it and they think that they're the same but it's like no the reason why people the reason why that guy has those things is because he works for them yeah i mean most i mean now i us say some people do get their shit for free i mean you know there's people that inherit something or people that you know their family's already rich so they don't have to do anything that's different 
It's like, yeah, the, some people do get shit handed to them, but um, uh, most people, if they have something nice, it's because they they put in some amount of work for it. And for instance, let's look at, you know, Mark Zuckerberg. He's a billionaire. It's not like he just got that money handed to him. He went and made fucking stupid-ass Facebook. <laughs> yeah, which I'm on right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm not saying that Facebook's valuable. I don't consider it to be valuable in any way, but he apparently just made something that people, you know, like and want to want to use a product that people want to... And it's especially about. used by women to fucking bitch about shit. Yeah, so I mean, uh, he went and made that, and now he gets to he gets to enjoy the benefits of having created it, which is a fuck ton of money. Yeah, well, you know, look at, um... Look at Mark Shuttle, uh... Shuttle, uh, oh gosh, Shuttle, Shuttle, the dude that came out with Ubuntu, you know, this dude's like really wealthy and he gives away, uh, his operating system for free. Yep, because he's too bitch. Yeah, and, um, I mean, like, there's all kind of people and all that, uh, but anyway, dude, uh, I'm going to end this and then you'll be over soon, right? Yeah, I'm getting ready right now. All right, um, all right, bye. All right, that was my interview with the disposable human doing. I am manslave. This video is oh fuck, it's uh it's six hours already. Um, I run the Validation Warfare YouTube channel, and uh, of course you can see my name is Manslave. Uh, if you're watching the video, um, and and until next time, you know I'm gonna go for now. I'm actually gonna eat for. You know, perhaps the first time today and all that. It's 11.06 p.m. on January 20th, 2013.